In 1971, Ford built an engine so radical it was banned before it could conquer the world. 330 horsepower. Canted valves screaming at 7,000 RPM, a street-legal race engine designed to humiliate GM and Chrysler, until it vanished overnight. But what if the truth was darker? What if Ford's greatest engine was sabotaged by its own creators? What if I told you the Boss 351 wasn't just another muscle car casualty? That Ford didn't simply retire it, but was forced to bury it? That behind closed doors, rising tensions, government crackdowns, and corporate shifts all conspired to erase this engine from history? This is the shocking truth behind Ford's 351 Cleveland. Cleveland's birth. By the late 1960s, the muscle car wars were in full swing, and Ford needed an answer to the ever-growing demand for high-performance V8s. The existing Windsor small blocks were solid, but as racing technology advanced, Ford saw an opportunity to create something more advanced, more powerful, and more efficient. Enter the 351 Cleveland, not just a new engine, but a revolution in small block performance. Launched in 1970, the Cleveland was born out of necessity and innovation. Ford's Windsor engine plant in Canada was struggling to keep up with production, so a new facility was established in Cleveland, Ohio, a move that allowed Ford's engineers to completely redesign the 351 from the ground up. They took lessons from the brutal world of motorsports, integrating high-performance technology that would make the Cleveland an unstoppable force on both the street and the track. What set the Cleveland apart were its cylinder heads, which came in two distinct variations. The two V-heads, designed for low-end torque and fuel efficiency, these heads featured smaller intake and exhaust ports, making them ideal for street applications. The four V-heads, inspired by Ford's big block V8s, these heads featured huge high-flow ports and canted valves, allowing for massive high RPM airflow, perfect for racing and high-performance builds. These advancements made the Cleveland engine larger and heavier than its Windsor counterpart, and while they shared external similarities, their internals were a different story. Many components were completely incompatible between the two. This was a new breed of small block, one that Ford believed would dominate the competition. The Cleveland wasn't just an evolution. It was a statement, a declaration that Ford wasn't just playing catch-up in the horsepower wars. They were ready to take over. Evolution and Performance Variants When the 351 Cleveland made its debut, it came in two main versions. The standard two-barrel 2V variant was tailored for fuel efficiency and low RPM torque, utilizing open combustion chambers. On the other hand, the four-barrel 4V variant was built for high performance, boasting closed quench combustion chambers in early models, 1970 to 1971, and later switching to open chambers to comply with emissions regulations. Horsepower Wars Boss, 351 Dominance, between 1970 and 1971. Ford, locked in a brutal horsepower war with GM and Chrysler, unveils a weapon unlike any before, the Boss, 351 Cleveland. With its radical the Cleveland's canted valve heads, high compression internals, and a screaming solid lifter cam, and Autolite carb, contrast with GM's LS6, and Chrysler's Hemi. It wasn't just fast, it was ferocious. Built for road racing dominance, the Boss 351 Mustang was lighter, sharper, and more aggressive than anything in its class. It didn't just compete, it destroyed expectations. Bobby Allison recounting a 1971 race where the 351 outrevved everything on the track. But beneath the roar of its 330 horsepower, underrated, of course, engine, trouble was brewing. Ford's golden age of muscle was running out of time. Ford engineers clashing with bean counters over costs, new government regulations, skyrocketing insurance rates, and the looming oil crisis were tightening the noose around high-performance cars. And just like that, the Boss 351's days were numbered. 
Dominance and Drama, 1971-1972, NASCAR's secret weapon, Bud Moore's team using Cleveland engines at short tracks, archival footage of Cale Yarborough dodging protests from rival teams, four V-heads versus Chevy's peanut port design. What made the 351 so special? The Boss In 1971, Ford unveiled the Boss 351, a high-performance version that pushed the limits of small-block V8 capabilities. Designed specifically for road racing, the Boss 351 came equipped with high-flow canted valve 4V heads, a solid lifter camshaft with an aggressive profile, an aluminum intake manifold, and an Autolite 4-3000-D four-barrel carburetor. With a formidable 11.0 to 1 compression ratio and forged internals, the engine was rated at an impressive 330 horsepower at 5,400 RPM. It also produced 370 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 revolutions per minute, though many believe real-world figures were even higher. To ensure it could sustain high RPMs, Ford also included a six-quart oil pan and cast aluminum valve covers. The Boss 351 was built for serious performance, and it made a lasting impact during its brief production run. Cobra Jet Ford also released the 351 Cobra Jet CJ between 1971 and 1974, targeting high-performance street applications. Unlike the Boss 351, the Cobra Jet featured a more street-friendly hydraulic lifter camshaft and a Holley 750 CFM carburetor instead of the Autolite unit. It used open-chamber 4V heads to meet emissions regulations, with compression ratios ranging from 8.5 to 1 to 9.0 to 1 depending on the year. Initially rated at 280 horsepower gross, its power output was gradually reduced to comply with new regulations. While often mistaken for a Super Cobra jet, Ford never officially produced such a version for the 351 Cleveland. Additionally, some later Q-Code 351C engines, 1972 and beyond, were marketed with Cobra Jet badging, further adding to the confusion. Ford used Cobra Jet loosely in the 1970s, leading enthusiasts to slap the term on non-CJ engines. Hot rodders often mix Cleveland heads with Windsor blocks, creating Clavor engines, or add CJ-style parts, muddying the waters. Shocking truth. The Cobra jet name carries weight, so it's often misapplied to any hopped-up 351. Next time someone claims they've got a 351 Cobra jet boss, smile and ask, is it a Cleveland, a Windsor, or a parts bin special? The 351 Cleveland's role in NASCAR. Driver rivalries. Bobby Allison versus Richard Petty feud over unbeatable Fords. The 351 Cleveland found favor in NASCAR, particularly in the 1970s and 1980s. Its superior high RPM efficiency made it a preferred choice for short track and road course racing, though Ford's larger big block 429 engines dominated super speedway events. Teams such as Bud Moore's No. 15 Torino were among the first to experiment with the Cleveland, and notable drivers like Bobby Allison and Cale Yarborough occasionally relied on it for select races. Ford spies stealing Chevy's plans, only to laugh at their inferior heads. While the Cleveland-powered NASCAR engines were heavily modified for competition, they built upon the solid foundation of the production models. Custom high-lift camshafts, reinforced pistons and rods, and precision-tuned heads were all part of these race engines. The design's potential was undeniable, and some Australian cast 351 Cleveland blocks even found their way into NASCAR well into the 1990s. However, as NASCAR rules evolved, the Cleveland's time in professional racing came to an end. The Silent Execution by 1973, Ford's priorities had shifted. Gas prices were soaring, emissions laws were strangling performance, and insurance companies were making muscle cars nearly impossible to own. 
The once mighty Boss 351 was quietly phased out, its potential cut short before it could cement its legacy. But was it really just about regulations? Or was Ford already looking ahead, planning something even bigger?